Hi everyone, Dr. Nemechek here. I want to talk to you about IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. Um, it's, you know, they break it up into these mixed patterns of IBS diarrhea or IBSD, IBS constipation or C, or IBS M mixed, and it doesn't really help you much, quite honestly. Um, what is IBS? Well, for all you people out there who've had the work of, scopes, lab tests, biopsies, x-rays, everything's normal, right? And, uh, and that's because they aren't testing your autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is the part of the brain that kind of regulates how everything functions, okay? I mean, the like your body runs very differently if you're sound asleep or being chased by a tiger. And all these different physiological changes you could imagine, that's what the autonomic nervous system does. So it controls all your organs, your blood pressure, your heart rate, your metabolism, your hormones, your immune system, your emotions. And I've talked before about when you get an injury here, two mechanical things happen. One is... The body has difficulty regulating the proper amount of blood pressure up into the head, the brain, the scalp, okay? You'll have less than optimal pressure up here. That gives you brain fog, uh, ADD, you know, fatigue, anxiety, aggression, uh, migraine headaches, neck tightness, what we call coat hanger pain. And then the other thing that happens is your intestinal conveyor belt slows down. Okay, so here, very simple, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. Your intestinal, think of it like a conveyor belt, okay? When you get a brain injury, whether it's something severe and, you're bl and you bled in your brain and you almost die to a mild subconcussive injury, this will slow down, okay? And you get different symptoms. I don't show it here, but if it's up here in the throat, people get what's called globus, this kind of choking sensation. Some people have trouble swallowing, all right? Uh, if your stomach's not emptying correctly, heartburn or reflux. If it's really bad, they'll call it gastroparesis. If it's in the small intestine, you get bloating or IBS, okay, cramping. And then in the large intestine, it's called constipation. These are all different types of symptoms, but all related to your intestinal conveyor belt slowing down, okay? IBS is an injury to the autonomic nervous system that is preventing it from, you know, pushing things forward correctly, and your predominant symptoms are small intestine, unless you have IBS-C, where you have bloating here and constipation, all right? Now, you get the injury. If you're otherwise normal, you have no inflammation or anything, you'll totally recover. A couple days, a couple weeks, really bad, you know, if you're unconscious for a while, maybe a month, too. Okay, but you would totally recover. The problem is we have chronic inflammation and from a multitude of things, mainly I'll talk about SIBO, but, and it's the inflammation that prevents you from recovering. You'll recover some, but not all the way, okay? Now, primary thing, and, and this is really, when you look at the studies for IBSD, uh, so irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea, and here's they use cyfaxin, okay? So, when you have bacterial overgrowth, so you have normal bacteria in the wrong place, okay? Cyfaxin, or the generic form, rifaximin, if you get a positive response, the only thing that it can do is fix SIBO. So if you feel like, hey, I feel kind of better, that proves you had SIBO, okay? Now you look at those studies, they give it three times a day for 14 days, X number of people do better, it's somewhere around 60, 70%. And then unfortunately, they haven't done enough because if you still have slow motility here, what happens? That's your primary risk factor for it to come back. And now we got studies, you know, you may have to give it to them again and again and again. Why? They keep relapsing. 
because it's not your only source of inflammation. Okay? And so, but that's what IBSD is. IBSC is maybe a little less intense uh, uh, overgrowth, so you have less diarrhea or more prominent slowing of the colon. It's the same thing. Mixed, this is back and forth, same thing. Okay? So, irritable bowel syndrome, brain injury that you don't recover from because of inflammation, and you end up with these symptoms of slowing uh, predominantly in the small intestine and cramping. You might have diarrhea, you might not, you might have constipation. Now, people say, well, I, I don't think I had a brain injury. And that's because, and this makes sense, people are thinking of like smashing your head into the car windshield or something, okay? Uh, and severe injury. And a severe is kind of singular a bit. And that's typically not, it's not what's happening to people. First, the injuries are threefold. You can have physical ones, so you can have a concussion. That's where you snap neurons, you do not bleed in the brain, so there's, you know, your CAT scan is normal, but you can have symptoms for more than a day or two, all right? You can have less than that, a subconcussive injury. So this is the equivalent of having a soccer ball. Snap neurons, don't bleed in the brain, but your symptoms are restricted to less than 24 hours. These are injuries, okay? If you don't have inflammation, you'll fully recover. If you do, you leave a little behind. You don't fully recover. And so these little, you know, where you hit your head on a, you know, a cabinet or something or the car hatch or something, you think, oh, you just feel more stupid than thinking you better report it to somebody, okay? That happens. The other thing is inflammation. So this can be the inflammation from a scalpel just the simple scalpel incision of surgery, boom, will give you the inflammatory stress from that, will give you a brain injury. Fracture of larger bones, typically more like pelvis, hip, humerus, uh, maybe forearm, um, but those will also give you a concussion. Now, again, if you don't have inflammation, you'll fully recover. If you do have inflammation, you leave some of the damage behind. And then finally, oh, and COVID is a major inflammatory concussion for most people okay um, and then you have emotional trauma and uh, in its severest form this is called the Takasubu event so a Takasubu event you know grandma dies and then grandpa's grief is so intense grandpa suffers a major injury to the sympathetic pathway and it's so bad he can't make his heart pump and he literally dies of heart failure and in the animal models uh, they show that you can see this damage in a microscope, okay, from emotions. But that could be, instead of something that extreme, that could be you're uh, ghosted by a friend, a bully, uh, molestation, um, your dog runs away for several hours, sudden event on the highway, you thought for a split second you might die. All of these will cause brain injuries, okay, again. If you don't have inflammation, you fully recover. It doesn't amount to anything. If you do have inflammation, you don't fully recover in a process we call cumulative brain injury. So here's the blue line is normal recovery. So we've got physical, emotional, inflammatory, and other inflammatory things here. Physical injury, back to baseline. Emotional injury, back to baseline. You know, inflammatory, back to baseline. Inflammatory, back to baseline. That's if you don't have inflammation. If you have inflammation, look, you get these injuries, you feel like you're better, but you just left a little behind. And you leave a little more, and a little more, and a little more. All right? And that's where most patients can't really, they'll say, oh, the last year it's been really bad. And I start talking to them. They've had, like, their symptoms have been building for like five or ten years. Just bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And they also not, people don't just have the slow motility problem, they all have the low blood pressure problem too. That's adding up. It's just that the IBS stuff might be the prominent kind of symptoms that they're having. So, so what do you do? You do our protocol. That's what it's designed to do. It's designed to reverse autonomic damage. Use rifaximin or cyfaxin. You typically, especially with IBS, because if it's going slow, okay, so the fundamental problem is it's going too slow but that slowness is the thing. So you treat with 
10, 14 days Zyfaxin like this, you're still slow, it hasn't recovered, and that's the thing that's gonna trigger you to relapse. So, you know, you need continuous for probably four months, okay, at least, before you try to go to intermittent uh, Zyfaxin or something like that. And then you need the high dose DHA fish oil. We've got our, you know, make a little pitch. We've got our uh, Nimichek Silver super high DHA fish oils. You need high quality olive oil to protect you from the food supply. We've got that. Okay. And, and if you're over 20, most people are going to need five minutes of VNS a day. And that will can. And the vast, vast majority of people, that'll cure you, okay? You'll be probably close to normal in about four months. All right? There's no quick route about it, but you'll be super healthy. Your inflammation will be way down. Your brain will be functioning better because the blood pressure stuff will be better. Overall, the inflammation is down. You're going to have lower risk of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, all sorts of stuff that's happening to people. Just make the decision. Give it a try, all right? That's all for today. Um, everybody, don't forget to uh, subscribe so you get uh, some more of our videos. You can go to nimacheckprotocol.com, pick up some of the supplements you might need. Other than that, have a great day. Bye.